Is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. <laughs> Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. We're coming into a time in history in which miracles will be like popcorn. I was just speaking the other week and a man came forward and he said, I had metal in my ankle. And when you said, take a leap of faith, the metal turned to bone, the pain disappeared. But the question I have is, it's wonderful he got a miracle. It's wonderful my next guest got a major miracle in her life. But the question is, how did she get a miracle? The question is, is it available for everyone? Is it available for you? Is it available for me? That's the questions you have, and you're going to get your answer, because yes and amen. Yes, and so be it. My guest, Sandra Kennedy, she trains people to operate in miracles. Now, miracles come from God, but there is a quipping. And she, her people, you told me that nine people that were brain dead the people you trained went into the hospitals, prayed for them, and they're normal. You know what that means? Nine people that are brain dead are normal? I mean, is that normal? Well, it depends <laughs> on how you come at it. <laughs> the Bible calls it normal. Well, if the, if the Bible calls it normal, uh -huh. then you call it normal, and I'm going to call it Absolutely. normal. How about you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, nine years of age, yeah. you received a call of God. When I was nine, I wasn't even sure there was a God. But at nine, you, what did God tell you? I was just uh, walking around my house, and I heard him say, one day I will use you in the healing I mean, Were your parents, did they pray for the sick? Did no. you see it in church? No. no. Did you believe in it? No. <laughs> I mean, God knows no. what he's doing. Yeah, it's that's right. Be all no. God. No. <laughs> on that. Okay, 71, your mom is given... What? Hours. Hours to, to live. live. 24 hours to live. Cancer. Right. She's dying. Right. What did you do? Well, I, I was working up in the north, and I was called in. I flew in home, and on the way home, I heard the word of the Lord say, Tell your mama. And he quoted the first part of uh, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And tell her there is no sickness in heaven. Now, Sid, I knew there was more to that prayer. My mom was a good old Southern Baptist. I was raised Southern Baptist, and, and, and I had never heard anybody say that. Did but you I came understand on. healing at that point? Not really. I, I had, well, remember the Lord had spoken to me, and I yeah. read my Bible and took me a little blue pen and marked everything in my Bible, you know, about healing. I had a blue Bible. When people began to do it, they'll end up with a blue Bible because healing's all over the Word of God. And so I came home, and I sat. My mother, she was in a coma. I, she did not even know I was there. They gave her less than 24 hours to live. And I brought my chair, just obedient young person, brought my chair, put it right by her bed, sat right there for five hours, Sid. Now, how many of you would have prayed over a loved one for five hours? How did you even know to pray for five well, hours? Well, I didn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't really call it praying. I just kept quoting what he said. <laughs> Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as is it in heaven. And then said, Mama, there is no sickness in heaven. Five hours. Never stopped it. Five hours. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. earth. As it is in heaven. on earth as it is in heaven. Next thing I know, she's wide awake. 
And of course, then I did just a really religious thing that I knew nothing about, don't even know where it came from. I, this thought popped in my mind to anoint her with oil. I'd never seen anybody anoint at oil in my entire life. Hmm. And anyway, so I went, and we didn't have any oil in the house, none, but we had some Crisco. Yeah, but he didn't tell you Crisco. He told you oil. Hey, I'm a good Southern girl. Okay. Had some Crisco. A can of Crisco, not a bottle. A can you put of up, Crisco. smeared it off. Lard, lard. <laughs> we came, and, and my sister and I, and spread it all over her. And then, you know, just think a minute with me, Sid. Here you, never done it before, never seen anybody do it, didn't know anything about it. I said, and, and I heard this thought, anoint her with oil. Didn't know where it was in the scripture, didn't know. But I began to anoint her. And so then the question comes, where do you anoint her? Well, I didn't know where to anoint her, so I wish began to put it here, put it there, put it, then put it everywhere. If, if, a, if a little bit would work, can you imagine what a canful will do? <laughs> 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 so what happened, what happened with your mother smeared in oil with hours to live up from dying well, of cancer? Well, we were holding her in a chair. We'd gotten her up and holding her in a chair, you know, because she'd been in a coma and didn't have strength to sit up. Well, we really couldn't hold her after we put the oil on her. I mean, she was... <laughs> but God supernaturally said, hit her. And I'm telling you, she jumped up totally and completely healed. And I saw on the records at the Medical College of Georgia, miracle, miracle. I, I didn't know they put that in records. Oh, well, I did. Years ago, they did. <laughs> okay. Miracle was written across it. All right. Live 25 now, years later, by the way. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, uh, we're looking at the year 2000. You have a collision. With yeah. your pet dog, With what my happened? My pet dog, my pet dog. It was on. It was on election night. I'm sitting on my sofa. I go to get up from my sofa. My dog's sitting right at my feet. She jumps up the same time I bend over to get up. Her head hits me right here, and her mouth closes. It's a Sheltie, so it got a little pointed mm -hmm. mouth. Hit me right here. Came down. Her tooth caught me here, and then she ripped off my top lip from right here, from my nose, all the way over to here, completely from here over to here top lip, she lip, she ripped it off. I did not know that. Blood went everywhere. I grabbed, ran into the bathroom, grabbed a towel, put a towel on my lip, called some friends, said, I think I need to go to the hospital from the blood, not from what I saw, because mm -hmm. I didn't see it. And went to the hospital, got to the emergency room. The very first thing the nurse said to me is, where is your lip? That's the one you found out. Yeah. I'll tell you what, hold that thought, because the lip is not available. The only thing available is plastic surgery. And if, what, what they want to do it about five six, or six times. Five or six times, she still would, would have, where it was sewn, she'd still have a cleft lip. Yeah. Uh, she would never be able to smile again. Right. Uh, and when you found that out, what did you say? Well, I grabbed hold of the doctor's hands. And I said, you know, this is my lip, my face, let's pray. And I said, I'll never have a surgery. My God's going to do this. Okay, hold that thought. They, they take a blank. She was really upset over this. Yeah. They, they didn't have the white stitches. Right. They take this big black stitch. They show her to go. Her mouth was like this. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Lift, and she's going to, in 10 days, she's got a conference with uh, six or 700 people coming in from all over the country to speak on healing. <laughs> Don't you dare go away. <laughs> Right back to It's Supernatural. Call now to get Sandra Kennedy's anointed book and three-part audio CD teaching, Proving God. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9202. We're getting reports back of all kinds of signs and wonders taking place, all kinds of things happening in people's lives. It is a now word for the now generation for what God is doing. Through Sandra's anointed book and audio CD teaching, you will understand how to clear every obstacle keeping you from receiving your breakthrough. Learn how to prove God by coming boldly before His throne of grace and effectively presenting your case based on God's Word. Receive an impartation of persistent, tenacious faith to help you access every promise of God for your life. Her book includes 37 different topics with personalized scripture, prophetic principles.
prayers and declarations to help access daily your miracle. People's lives were transformed. Marriages began to turn around. Children's lives began to turn around. People began to get jobs who had no jobs. Sid says Sandra is the clearest teacher I've heard on faith because she shares from the Word of God and her own experience. Don't miss out on getting Sandra Kennedy's anointed book and three-part audio CD teaching, Proving God. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9202. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9202 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. Th this sounds awful. Uh, her pet dog bites off somewhere between a third and half of her, uh, was it upper lip? Upper lip. Uh -huh. uh, and will an upper lip grow back? They told itself? me the upper lip would not grow back. If it had been the bottom lip, it would reproduce, except the upper lip would not. Okay, so they wanted to do a half a dozen or so surgeries, plastic surgeries, um, uh, and she says no, uh, because the repercussion was it wasn't going to look that good, but it looked better than it was because they sewed it back just so she could get out and it stopped bleeding, and uh, her, her mouth was messed up. Uh, she, in 10 days, she had a conference, uh, and I understand you spoke to your lip. Tell me how you did that. I did. And uh, uh, you know, when, when they told me that, no matter even with the surgery, they said I'd never be able to smile again. I'd, I'd never see all my teeth again. And, that I, and I wouldn't be able to even speak. I'm a preacher. You know, and they said, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but uh, so when the conference came around, again, my nose is sitting basically over here. My whole mouth is swap sided. I can speak only out of the side of the, this little corner of the mouth. But I went on and had the conference, and I'm teaching them on healing. And I'm on, I'm a whosoever going after my whatsoever. And in between me and my whatsoever is a mountain. And the Bible says, speak to that mountain. Well, my mountain was this mouth and this lip. And so when I got to that place in the service teaching them how to grab hold of their healing, I turned around and said, it's every man for himself. And I, man, I turned my back to the complete audience, threw my hands up in the air, and I began to tell that lip in the name of Jesus to move itself because I had already been speaking to it, Sid. I had already told the doctor I would not look at any book that had any cleft lips or anything in it. I would not look at it. I would not get that picture in my mind. I had already put on every wall in my house a picture of me smiling. Uh, I mean, a beautiful smile, of course, all over my house. And uh, that's what I looked at. That's what I wanted in my mind. So when I turned my back on, on the congregation, I began to command that lip, just like this, in the name of Jesus, I command you, lip, in Jesus' name, to reform, reshape, and, and to materialize and to grow in Jesus' name. I took my fingers and I began to speak to it. I command you to move. But all these hundreds of people, they're watching you. They're watching my back honey, because I got my back to them, hallelujah. Okay. But, but, but no, but, but there are screens, uh, screens, and they are watching me. They are watching okay. me. Okay, so you're talking to your, to your lip, for your, every man for himself, man then for what himself. happens? It moves. My lip moves. My lip moved. Now, it didn't, it, it didn't move a whole lot, but it moved enough that I knew that it moved. I wasn't even talking plain because I, I, I you know, I couldn't even right. hardly speak. And because all of my lips are glued to my teeth. So you're just kind of speaking from the I'm side. From this little side of my mouth. I'm holding the microphone over here like this, holding a healing conference. How would conference. you like to have been at a healing conference <laughs> and, your t and your teacher, your great teacher, <laughs> right. can't even speak. Right. And got black gut on top of that. Oh, 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 I, oh man. You were oh, really concerned. I'm, about that bothered me bad. Yes, okay. absolutely. Out of curiosity, what happened to the other people when they were speaking to their mountain or their problem? Well, when I, of course, when I, when it moved, I screamed and yelled because I, you know, praise God because I felt it move. Well, then they started praising God and screaming because they started experiencing healings. So it just su supernaturally went all through the audience and everywhere that, you know, that, that uh, uh, faith just began to just rise up everywhere. Now, uh, did you ever go back to that doctor? I did. What did he I, say? I went back as a regular schedule. I, I went back and he said, what are you doing? And uh, I said, well, 
Let me tell you. So I told him what I was doing. I told him I was speaking to my lip and all this kind of stuff. And he said to me, you still must look at this book or all these pictures in because you will never be able to smile, da 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 And I said, I will not. And I will look at pictures of me just with a beautiful smile. I will be able to smile. I will be able to speak. My God will do it. And he just looked at me and he said, well, just keep whatever you're doing. Just keep doing it. How long? <laughs> keep them whatever you're doing and you kept yeah, doing it. How I kept long doing did, it. How long did you keep Probably eight or nine it? months. Eight or nine months. Eight or, would you have stuck mm -hmm. with it like that? Eight or nine months. Eight or nine mm -hmm. months. And I want you to look, get a close up of it, smile. Smile at this camera right here. <laughs> now that's better than any plastic surgeon I know. I'll tell you what. what never, never had any plastic surgeon. Never had anything what, done. What the devil meant for evil, God used for good. Why do I say this? She learned a new way of praying yes. that she's going to explain to you when we come back. Don't yes. you dare go away. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. If you love watching our It's Supernatural TV program, you can now watch hundreds of archive programs online, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, on your computer, your smartphone, your iPad, or your favorite tablet. In addition to archive programs, you'll be able to also watch special ministry and mentoring sessions taped at our It's Supernatural Media and Mentoring Center in Charlotte, North Carolina, with the best teachers in the various gifts of the Holy Spirit. You will also be able to enter into the presence of God through anointed worship and special soaking prayer sessions. Just log on to SidRoth.org forward slash ISN. ISN will be the vehicle to equip you to being normal, normal as defined by the Bible. You will be taught and receive impartation to walk in the supernatural of God like never before. That's SidRoth.org forward slash ISN. We now return to It's Supernatural. Sid Roth here with Sandra Kennedy, and she had a creative miracle. And out of that creative miracle, she learned how to prove God. What do you mean by proving God? I mean taking him at his word, Sid. So many people know about God and do not know God and have not settled it in their mind that God is not a man that he should lie. And if he said it, he will do it. Now, it took me a process. You know, we, we know a lot about God, but it takes us a little while to grab hold that He really is God. And, and I've always said, if God is God, then God is God. And if He's God, He's God, you know? <laughs> so, how that I'm not going to argue. No, no, sorry. <laughs> and so, that, even as a child, that process stayed in my mind, even going to seminaries where they were teaching me that signs and wonders had passed away and all that kind of stuff, because I was really taught that. And so, but the reality that God had to be everything He says He is, and if His Word is, a, uh, is who he is, one and the same, then I could take his word and if he said it and I would believe it, it had to come to pass the way he said it. I call that proving God. It talks about it in Isaiah. It talks when he says, come let us reason together. And then when he talks about, you know, uh, come and prove your case. Come talk to me is the way I like to put it. Come talk to me. Tell me why I should do for you what you say I should do. Let's take healing for, for a perfect example. He said that by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. He says that he's already done it. He said he sent his word and healed me. And, and so if I can believe, grab hold of that and believe that word, then I can bring that word back to him. And Isaiah, he also says that his word will not return unto him void. That means that he spoke his word. He spoke it down on the earth. Then somebody's got to pick that word up and return it to him. And so I call proving God picking his very word back up and returning that word back to him. This is what you said. You said that by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. You said you sent your word and healed me. You're the one who said that you've done all this for me. So I'm holding you to your word. And that's proving him. That's coming in and saying, this is what you said. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to take you at your word. And I'm going to learn. First of all, you've got to know what the Bible says. You've got to understand the word of God. You've got to get in that Bible. You've got to understand it. But this doesn't only work for healing. Now, I have seen hundreds, actually thousands of people healed over all these years that God has, has used me in the healing ministry. But most importantly, I see people taking the Word of God and letting that Word become 
more reality to them. And then taking that word and saying, this is what you said. You can't lie. God is not a man that he should lie. And holding that word back up to God, and I'm expecting you to do what you said you would do. You know, I have to ask you a question. Uh, when you had that Yes. Tragedy is what it was yes. With, yes. with a chunk of your upper right. lip that won't grow back right. gone. Right. Uh, you put scriptures all over. I you did. know the scriptures. Yes. Why did you do that? Because I'm a firm believer through all the years of dealing and healing, I'm a firm believer that we have to start over each time almost because we don't keep the scriptures in front of our eyes all the time. Now, Proverbs 4 says to do that says to keep the Word of God right in front of your eyes and that it will produce healing. But most of the time we do that based on where we are, if you need a healing, physically. Then you will have those scriptures in front of you looking at them. If not, you could be reading up on Armageddon. <laughs> so, but tell me, now, <laughs> when you put them up around, uh, describe, I mean, really describe us. Did you get, uh, uh, was it this size of paper? Yeah, all sizes, yeah. And, and where'd you put it? I put it everywhere. I put it, first of all, on my mirror. I put it on, on, on the mirror in the bathroom, and then I put it on the wall, everywhere, in the kitchen, on the counters, everywhere. I, some, of, some of my, most of them I just, I would write, just handwritten. I'd make these big notes, and I'd put them everywhere I'd go that I would see them, along with a picture, along uh, with a picture of me smiling. Okay, you walk the visualize. In, I, I'm convinced you walk in miracles, yeah. but can anyone that anyone. is born again, again that does what you did yes. walk in miracles? Yes. Tell, I, all right, tell me in your congregation, you have a healing center, you have a yeah, congregation. Yeah. Uh, tell me what's going on with people there. Oh, you could not name anything that we have not seen God heal. You couldn't, there's not a disease you could name. See, I don't care what it is. What about cancer? Oh, my goodness. It's the top of the list. What I do mean, you mean the top of the list? I mean, percentage-wise. Well, uh, let's get her out to Duke University or Mayo Clinic quick. <laughs> percentage-wise, percentage-wise, we see more cancer healings than anything else, percentage-wise. And we've seen, I mean, people come off, uh, I mean, people on di with diabetes, people on kidney machines, uh, heart, people waiting for heart transplants. Comas? Co nine people already, you know, that were, right. that were brain dead. Plus, we've seen fingers grow, feet grow, new body parts, new body parts. Hey, but you told me something that's important. When you walk into someone that's brain dead or in a coma, yeah. you speak to their spirit. Explain yeah. that. Well, the Bible says that God is the Father of spirits. So you don't let the flesh throw you. I mean, that's just the house that you're living in. <laughs> so you don't let the flesh call the shots. I mean, at your house that you live, whatever street you live on here, your house doesn't tell you when it needs painting and what it needs doing. You are in charge of that house. I hope you're listening. So spirit man, my spirit man lives inside of this body. This is my house. So if you were in a coma, I would come in and talk to you as if you were not in a coma. I speak directly to the spirit man. I mean, no bars held. I mean, come right straight. And I'd say, hello, Sid, how are you? And I want you to know I've come to tell you that Jesus is here to heal you. I will quote the word to you. This is what he has already done. What makes you think that I'm hearing this if I'm in a coma? Because I know the spirit man. The Bible says that you and I are made in the image of God, and God is the Father of spirits, and we're three parts, spirit, soul, and body. What happens when uh, weather comes to your church? Hurricanes. We speak to it. We speak to the elements. We, we take the same, everything I'm saying for you will work with the weather. It will work with your job. It will work with your marriage. It will work with your children. It will work in an economy that everything's falling apart. It will work if you take the word, again, process that word until it becomes a reality to you. You got to get it out of head, get it to your heart. You got to drop it out of hope, get it down into faith. People come to God in hope. You got to move it to faith. And you could do that by meditating on the Word of God, getting that word, thinking about it. What does this really mean? I, I would break the scriptures down. I would look at, he sent his word and heal me. What does that mean? And I would process it. By his stripes, I am healed. You have two minutes to mm -hmm. pray for miracles like popcorn for yes. the people that are watching right now. Yes. 
Well, in the name of Jesus, I'll tell you right now, all you have to do is remember you're not trying to get Jesus to heal you. He has already done it. All he, you, I want you to do is to accept what he has done with your mouth, but that's how you release your faith, with your mouth begin to say, thank you, Lord, that you have healed me. Forget about your body. Your body will catch up with your spirit. Let your spirit man rule the body. Don't let the body rule the spirit. Begin to tell your body what your God has done for it and begin to speak to it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that I'm healed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, that you are re-establishing uh, in my body. Thank you that the power of the blood is flowing through me. Thank you that by your stripes I'm healed. I command in the name of Jesus, like I did my lip to move, I command my knees to move, my arms to move, my any part of my body in the name of Jesus. And then I begin to praise him, Sid. I praise him that he is not a man that he should lie, that he has done everything he said he would do. He did it for me. He'll do it for you. It will work for anybody, for anything that you will take it and make God master and Lord over the situation. Well, while you were speaking, the anointing so strong on you, people with arthritis in your fingers where it hurts to bend your fingers, I command yes. in Jesus' name those yes. fingers to operate the way God intends. Yes. You know, do you yes. do that action now? Yes. You do that. And if you have backache, just bend over. Yes. 20 seconds, yes. pray for cancer, yeah. tumors. I curse you in the name of Jesus. I mean, every tumor, I command you to shrink. I command you to die. I command you to fall off. I have seen them fall off. You fall off in the name of Jesus. And I life your body from the top of your head to the soles of your feet with the word of the Lord that says that by his stripes you are healed and you are healed. Amen. God says you are. <laughs> <laughs> Call now to get Sandra Kennedy's anointed book and three-part audio CD teaching, Proving God. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9202. We're getting reports back of all kinds of signs and wonders taking place, all kinds of things happening in people's lives. It is a now word for the now generation for what God is doing. Through Sandra's anointed book and audio CD teaching, you will understand how to clear every obstacle keeping you from receiving your breakthrough. Learn how to prove God by coming boldly before His throne of grace and effectively presenting your case based on God's Word. Receive an impartation of persistent, tenacious faith to help you access every promise of God for your life. Her book includes 37 different topics with personalized scripture, prophetic prayers, and declarations to help access daily your miracle. People's lives were transformed. Marriages began to turn around. Children's lives began to turn around. People began to get jobs who had no job. Sid says Sandra is the clearest teacher I've heard on faith because she shares from the Word of God and her own experience. Don't miss out on getting Sandra Kennedy's anointed book and three-part audio CD teaching, Proving God. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9202. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9202 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. Next week on It's Supernatural. We're doing something interactive that I don't know if it's ever been done before. I am going to mentor you in the lost art of soaking. And I've asked my friend Julie True and if you've never heard her music, you're in for quite a treat. The presence of God is so strong. You love me with an everlasting love. You love me with an everlasting love. I want you to grab a pillow because in the third segment, you are going to soak, and we're going to mentor you on how to soak. And by the way, I'm not the only one, Meshuggah. That's a Hebrew word that means crazy. I got a whole studio full of Meshuggah people, don't I? <laughs>